Hey, welcome, reconsider. Community attacks, community disharmony. There seems to be have been a lot of that recently. Um, and a lot of it surrounding Corey Good and also more recently, David Wilcock. It seemed to be at its height kind of during Contact in the Desert and afterwards. And Contact in the Desert 2017, I actually attended. And it was around about the time I first started doing, you know, YouTube videos. And I was doing some video content to do with Contact in the Desert and sometimes to do with Corey Good. And I got attacked, got quite a lot of comments, which is surprising because at the time I had very low viewing figures like I do now. But anyway, and even videos with like no Corey Good content in there, I was being attacked in the comments section for kind of supporting Corey's information. And I pointed out on a few occasions, like there's literally no Corey information in this video. So you obviously haven't watched it. You're just sort of blindly commenting. And it was always the sort of same individuals that seemed to kind of comment as well. And a lot of the stuff I didn't allow to be posted on there because it got caught in my spam filters. And it was just, again, just kind of repeated kind of comments. So it, again, it suggested there's very much an, an assertive effort to kind of attack Corey and his information about the secret space program. And you know, again, you're gonna sort of think, you know, why is this? Why are they going after him so much? Obviously, potentially because the information he's talking about is potentially true. So slightly after kind of contact in the desert, there was a, a YouTube channel called The Dark Journalist and the guy on there released about eight critical videos to do with Corey Good. And it sort of talked about him fabricating his IT job before he sort of came into the truth community about how he was sort of desperate for funds and he was essentially data mining information uh, to sort of come then forward as a as a whistleblower and he's not actually a true whistleblower and he's making up a lot of the things he's talking about and it just sort of apparently discredits the secret space program the whole kind of narrative and he was claiming that you know essentially Corey Good is a psychological kind of operation and not to be trusted now as I said it's not only just Corey Good that's been attacked it's individuals sort of linked to him and David Wilcock also kind of appeared at Contact in the Desert and hadn't really been seen in public that frequently. Uh, he's been away from the limelight for a while, uh, for a few months, and he sort of came back on the 5th of August because he posted a new article on his website, Divine Cosmos, and it was called Why David Needed Time Out and What's Next. And it just discussed essentially in this article how he re-emerged after months away because he wanted to sort of reconnect, sort of relax, sort of play music, just heal, kind of re-energize, because he's been working solidly for the last 20 years and has never really kind of taken any time out and he just felt exhausted. Then on the 14th of August, he released another article on his website and it was called David Wilcox Breaks Sabotage. Was it the Dark Alliance? Now, apparently this stems from um, an incident that occurred on the 12th of August where his brakes died on his car. And he suggests something obviously big is coming and he's now coined this new term called the Dark Alliance. And these are the figures that he says are attacking him, Corey Good, and other people within the community. He sort of then talks about in the article how, you know, sort of the CIA's meddling in the media has gone back all the way sort of since, you know, after kind of JFK with Operation Mockingbird. And now cabal agents have now infiltrated areas like Google, Facebook and Apple News. He even discusses how he, because he has a Gmail account, that um, the Gmail filtering, the spam filtering, filters a lot of um, content away from his colleagues, people are sending him emails, and also other important information. And so again, he's, he seems to think that Gmail is also censoring a lot of the content he's receiving. And then sort of goes on to discuss, it's not obviously only affecting Corey Good and himself and other members. There's sort of Alex Jones of Infowars and there was a, a recent infamous um, song that was released by a, a website called Super Deluxe. And initially it was to kind of poke fun at Alex Jones and some of the information that he's talking about actually went viral. And Alex Jones quite liked it and it was basically took Alex Jones audio about him kind of ranting about Hillary Clinton and to do with you know the satanic paedophile networks. And then they put like a folk song on, over, over the top of it. Um, and it became really popular. It was a very catchy tune. And the viewing figures went up to about 7 million uh, viewing uh, sort of hits. And, and then miraculously, this went down to like 1.5 million. And this was just another blaring act of YouTube censoring, you know, the viewing figures of particular videos. And not only this, do they do this in individual videos, but also kind of people subscribing particular channels that goes up and down as well. So it just points towards blatant censorship by some of these internet giants. 
the cabal have always had this depopulation agenda and they use it, this depopulation. They will either try and get it through nuclear war, viral pandemics, sort of chemical spills, um, weaponized foods and vaccines, engineered sort of economic collapse, martial law, uh, deliberately provoked wars and weather disasters, along with natural catastrophes and even faked alien invasion. So Wilcock talks about the cabal always pushing for these events to potentially depopulate the earth. And Pete Peterson, one of kind of um, David Wilcock's closest advisors, uh, was warned about 9-11 and what they were hoping with 9-11, that it would trigger some of the events that I just discussed to help this kind of depopulation. There are potentially millions of people living underground in 250 known cities. And these were originally built for, you know, the elites during the event of a nuclear war. And this is why we have, he says, economic depression, not only in the United States, but across the world globally, because all this money is being spent to fund this dual kind of society, underground society, which is why, you know, at the moment, the economy across the world is so depressed and there is such huge inequality between kind of rich and poor. And again, he sort of reiterates the cabal sort of wanting to take over to create like a, a global government. And also they sort of try and get to this through using kind of proxy armies such as ISIS. Now, he also talks about in this article about Corey Good and about how he had some intel from a form, former colleague from the Texas Star Guard where he used to work. And he was talking about how U.S. special forces are actually distributed around the U.S. and they're there for surveillance and they're surveilling uh, satanic groups and they are ready to strike at any point. And he was also discussing how people would be absolutely shocked about how much these satanic groups have literally infiltrated all aspects of society. And now they sort of, it's deemed so endemic and so like saturated with this that it's difficult to imagine how to stop it without some sort of coup, you know, military coup. This is why these US special forces are there. People like Benjamin Fulford and Alex Jones are receiving the same sort of briefings, the same sort of information as David Wilcock. David also discusses that there, there are kind of quite well-known pain, you know, truth community sort of uh, commenters who, who are actually paid assets uh, by the cabal. Some of them don't really know that they're being used. Um, it was one of like David Wilcott's close insiders also approached him uh, to avoid certain topics, to avoid talking about certain things. And in return for doing that, he could potentially sell his car and be overpaid for it. So this is, a, you know, basically just bribery, really. And it was on the 3rd of July, he was threatened on the phone by this close insider that if he didn't comply, that they would have, you know, release a huge data dump on Corey Good. So this is another aspect of the attack against kind of Corey. Now, Jacob, one of, one of his closest insiders, used to work for the Rothschilds. And he was saying apparently that, or she was saying that um, they are threatened by Corey's information, especially the kind of blue avians. Now, this... Uh, individual who threatened like David Wilcock promised that if he went along with this agenda and not talking about certain things that he could potentially be the next Alex Jones. Um, he could talk about Antarctica, but not about the hidden bases and not about the, the you know, the, the mothership that's been found underneath the ice. He just literally only can talk about the, the ancient kind of aspects to Antarctica. Um, because he discusses how the cabal believe they are fallen angels and they have these like elongated skulls and they perceive themselves as having higher IQ to the rest of sort of humanity. And Pete Peterson confirms that there is a mothership under Antarctica to, to confirm this story and, you know, how the cabal want this slow disclosure to be spread across 40 to 100 years. So this is another reason why they want to control the flow of information through David Wilcock, through bribery and also kind of threatening kind of data dumps against Corey. So David says that the attacks for him in terms of the internet attacks really kind of start in December of 2016 when his YouTube channel was actually kind of taken down. And then recently, because he'd been releasing new articles on his website, Divine Cosmos, uh, they initially this group started to attack his uh, voting system for the comments. And then also the comments tabs themselves, they sort of became deactivated. And it's all to, to do with like Corey's information. They want, you know, Wilcock to have a public divorce from Corey Good and, and not really continue talking about the information that he's been describing. Uh, David also said that there was an individual called Jack the Hat that managed to 
sorry, Jack the Hack. He managed to get root access to his site and then created an identity and then left a message for uh, David Wilcock on his website. And it went like this. We have a data dump on Corey Good. This data dump will ruin you both. Suggest you dump Corey Good. If you do so before your next post, then we will stop. So again, it really sort of shows that they're really trying to attack Corey Good through sort of David Wilcock. Now, David Wilcock has written before about an, in, an individual or group called Teddy Bear. Um, and then essentially he says they're a group that just go on the internet and then mainly sort of uh, copy, download copyrighted material from other truth community commenters. So it could be Corey Good, it could be David Wilcock, it could be Stephen Greer, it could be anyone. They download their uh, sort of older material and then repackage it and re-upload it and say that it's new. So if people are trying to find new content on YouTube, um, to do with David Walcott, it's really hard because the only stuff that kind of comes up are kind of really old things that he talked about two or three years ago. And again, it's a concerted effort really to sort of muddy the waters. But then also this group, apparently he estimated to have made potentially $1 million copywriting this material. And YouTube do nothing about it either because, you know, they've been compromised by the CIA and they have assets there preventing it. Um, but also it could be possibly the fact there is so much content that's been uploaded, it's hard to kind of keep tabs on it and um, whereas most other sort of alternative news websites or truth uh, community commenters they can't monetize the videos on youtube anymore because certain search terms have been demonetized so if you try and make a video and monetize a video about david wilcock you will never get any you will never get any advertising revenue for it so this just goes to add to the collusion that you know actually operation mockingbird you know that we talked about the cia infiltrating the american media potentially is still alive because they have infiltrated these big internet giants and now because of all this david really only talks on sort of coast to coast radio or jimmy church radio because he says these are the only sort of um you know people that actually go after copyrighted content if content is copyrighted they actually go after and try and prosecute Corey Good received a message from an individual uh, claiming that he wanted to come forward and be a whistleblower. And if he, if Corey agreed to it, then he, this individual will then reveal the whole operation against Corey Good and David Wilcock. But in order for him to do that, they both had to sign an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement. Now, in this agreement, they, they would then promise to promote something further down the line. It could be a service or a product. But if they ever infringe this NDA, both Corey and um, David would uh, potentially be sued 900,000 euros. Now, um, they would also be subject to the courts in Denmark, which I don't quite understand because I don't know how Danish courts have jurisdiction in the United States. Maybe they do. I'm not quite sure. But apparently this non-disclosure agreement was such a bad document. It was would be so easy for both Corey and sort of David to, to be prosecuted. They immediately said no. Then going back to Pete Peterson, recently he contacted David Wilcock and uh, on a telephone call and said that um, the, all the possessions in his house had been removed by the police and they were actually threatening to dig a hole and bury all the contents and sort of steamroll over, over everything. Now, this has been a continuing issue with um, sort of Pete Peterson since, since he became a whistleblower and, and some of the inf amazing information he's been talking about. Basically, the elites have been threatening him. So he's lost his security clearance. He lost his $3,600 a month pension. And also the bank were refusing to take any mortgage payments, which then meant that his house defaulted, hence why his contents of his home were locked in the house. Now, all the possessions stored in the house, uh, obviously personal valuables, but then also a lot of secret documents. So there's a lot of really valuable stuff in there. Now, also apparently, if, if anyone approached the police while they were doing this operation, removing the contents, then they were immediately given a 90-day jail sentence. And it's not only um, Pete Peterson's house home contents that's been taken, it was also his truck, his only form of transport was actually taken away from him. And apparently this legal case has been going on for years. It turns out that the judge has either been compromised or is incredibly corrupt because other lawyers have sort of looked at the case and they're just astounded about the illegal irregularity surrounding this case and how unfairly kind of Pete Peterson is being treated. Now, a silver lining to this story 
um, is that someone, kind individual, started a GoFundMe account for Pete Peterson. And at the moment, I think it's way over like $50,000 to sort of help him in trying to recover his contents, which apparently recently David Wilcox said that his contents was now safe. So hopefully he will be able to get it back. But yeah, an amazing story. And it's been so generous of people to kind of give their money to him, really. So you've got, you know, David Wilcox, um, Corey Good, and then Pete Peace, and there's other individuals who've been attacked as well. So Jordan Sather is sort of a, quite a, a young guy. He's got a really good uh, YouTube channel and, and grown incred- incredibly quickly. And he's also started to go on the conference circuit as well. He was contacted. And again, they wanted him to turn his back on Corey Good and then avoid talking about certain topics. And in return, I assume they were then proposing to potentially bribe, provide funds, but then also help him kind of raise his profile. I know the long-standing kind of established fig- figures such as Linda Moulton Howe, she was also contacted as well, sort of turn her back on Corey. So it, it, literally Corey Good has been attacked from all sides and personally, but also through other kind of key mem- members of the kind of truth community. And it's got even more personal for kind of Corey Good as well, where a group contacted the UN and this agency deal specifically with cults and cult members. And someone uh, reported the Blue Avians as being a cult and also Corey Good as actually being a cult member. And it's got even worse for him as well because apparently the uh, local child protection agency near where he lives were also contacted and they were advised that Corey Good's children were at risk. So yeah, really, really sad for him that he's getting so much kind of attacks for the information he's talking about. But it just goes to show that, you know, potentially there is an element of truth or it is all true. So it just like re-energizes me to really continue to talk about it because obviously the information that Corey talks about has always been amazing and fantastical, but I've always treaded very carefully with it because he generally is the only person that's talking about it. But due to the attacks, it just, you know, confirms that potentially a lot of what he's saying is actually true. Anyway. Thank you very much for joining me. This has been the uh, Community Attacks video. Um, If you like what you hear and you want to hear more, then please do subscribe. You can click the button below. Um, Also, there's the reconsider.news website, which we kind of update hopefully on a daily basis. And if you're feeling incredibly generous, then please do um, donate to Patreon. And we also have PayPal as well. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.